Precious Lord, lead me home when my way grows drear. Precious Lord, linger near when my life is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand. Lest I fall, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on and help me stand. I am tired and I am weak and I am worn through the storm and through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. Amen. Thank you both. How about now? <laughs> there we go. Just a reminder, we all need to power up and give thanks because this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad and I applaud you and appreciate you all, the few, the proud, the brave Ohioans that will get out when it is down below a certain temperature. So thanks to everyone for making the effort to be here this morning. Special hugs and appreciation for those of you who are doing what is right and safe for you to stay home and join us over live stream or watch worship a little later in the day or week. Know that however you participate in this congregation, in this act of worship, truly your presence makes us more fully the body of Christ. Today is another special day in the life of the church. I got to spend some wonderful time yesterday with our deacons and elders, and we will be ordaining one and two and installing several new classes into leadership in the service today. So if you have your bulletin, uh, when it gets to the part that talks about ordination and installation, you're going to refer to the blue insert, and then we'll pick up with the bulletin again at the offering. All the other things going on in our church, prayer concerns, birthdays, information about how to stay in touch and be in touch is all included in that bulletin. So take a moment and look that over and take it with you. And now uh, let us take this time to be fully present and wrap our hearts and minds and focus around God's word to us this morning. Katie Schmidt made it back from a little trip with some twists and turns in it, but I'm so glad you could be here this morning to be our worship leader. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please rise in body and spirit and join me in our call to worship this morning. God spoke the creative word into the formless void. The cries, Lord. From the wilderness, God brought forth new life and liberation. The animals, that inhabit the wild places cry, Lord. A messenger in the wilderness brings good news. God's people cry, Glory. In baptism, we are united to God through Jesus Christ. With all of creation, we cry, Glory. Let us worship God.
today we will celebrate the occasion of Christ's baptism when the one who was without sin received the baptism of repentance so that we who have sinned may be converted by his righteousness. It is the Holy Spirit that enables us to tell the truth about our brokenness and the brokenness in the world around us, knowing that we are assured already of the grace and salvation we know in Jesus Christ. So let us pray these words of confession together. Creating God, we cannot look at our lives, our communities, or the world around us without seeing the fractures and brokenness that reflect the reality of sin. You created the earth and called it good, but it now groans, awaiting redemption and recreation under the weight of our greed, abuse, and carelessness. You cre created humanity in your image and called us very good, but we have ignored the image of God in one another. We have created, maintained, and benefited from unjust systems built on divisions based on race, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, and more. You poured out your love in Jesus Christ, who showed us how to live and how to love. But we continue to make our own path, follow our own desires, and neglect to love others as Christ loves us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Help us to remember our identity and purpose as your people so that we may authentically show your love to one another. Let the sounds of the waters of baptism remind us of that moment when the heavens part, the waters swirl, and a dove descends, reminding us that we, too, are God's beloved children. We are covered by God's grace and forgiven in Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as siblings in Christ, forgiven and freed by the great love of God, let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace.
us the frozen chosen for nothing, right? Come on, we got to prove them wrong. Hey, <laughs> I forgot what comes next. Something I always have to remember, which is the water of baptism. And the folks that can help me learn about it. Who's brave enough to come up here this morning and talk to me? My poor victim, Enoch. You get to, like, bypass the line to get into heaven someday, man. You just, like, put in all your good deeds now. So, Levi. All right, we got a buddy here. Strength in numbers. Got a question for you guys. Do you remember your baptism? No? Do you remember yours? Do you really? Were you, were you old enough to remember it? Maybe? You were? <laughs> you know what? I think, you know, sometimes we can remember those things. Even if we were tiny, tiny babies, I didn't remember it until I was old enough to have a baby of my own, and she was born with this big head of hair, and so right away I had this newborn baby, and I had to learn how to wash her hair and pour the water over her head without getting in her eyes. And I could almost remember being that small enough that somebody would hold me over the tub or the sink and wash my hair. And sometimes when we baptize babies here, that's kind of what we do and what it feels like. So we may or may not remember our own baptisms. I was, for my baptism, I was actually an adult. I was 35, so I do remember my baptism. Um, but when we celebrate baptism with other people, we see babies or adults getting baptized, it's a chance to remember that. Or when we jump in a pool and we're surrounded by lot water or go swimming in a lake, or when we're taking a shower, I mean, the most common thing that we encounter in our lives, luckily for us, because we have it available, is water, right? Do you guys ever go a day without water? Did you? Have you ever gone a day without water? How did that feel like? Your mouth was dry? Tired? I know when I don't have enough water, I feel kind of shriveled up like a raisin. And the thing that I think is great about water is it reminds us that we also don't ever go a day without God's love. It's always with us. You know, whether we drink it in or soak in it or float in it, it's just kind of like this thing that surrounds us. And I was actually going to take you guys on a field trip into my office for the children's moment to see my fish tank. Have you seen it in there? You've seen a fish tank, though, before, right? Fish in water. I remember thinking one time, do the fish know that they're in water? Like, do you think they think about that? Probably not, because we don't walk around all the time saying, I'm swimming in air, right? <laughs> but we're like that. We're like the fish surrounded and floating in the water all the time, only we're surrounded and held in God's love, which means that in any given moment, in any given day, no matter what happens to you, whether you feel sad, mad, scared, hurt, broken, the truth and the reality is that you are loved by God, which means that you are okay just the way you are, right? All of us, at any moment, God looks at us and says, you're perfect, you're beloved. Now here, let me dry you off after that bath, put you in fluffy pajamas, and give you something warm and good to drink. Doesn't that sound like God's love? All right, are we thankful for that? Amen. Say a prayer with me. God, we thank you, God, we thank you. For, surrounding us for surrounding us at all times, at all times. With, your love. with your love. Amen. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. God of wisdom, send your Holy Spirit upon us and show us your word, show us your way. Amen. Our reading today will begin with Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 13, 
You can follow along in your Pew Bible on page 812. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descended on him like a dove. And a voice came down from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was in with wild animals and angels attended him. We get a uh, rather large chunk from the Gospel of Mark today. Our second reading now comes from Mark chapter 2. And it's several successive little lessons here. So I'm going to kind of separate and punctuate those with a little movement here. Continue to listen for the Word of God in these words from Mark's Gospel. Once again... Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. And as he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And when the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, saw Jesus eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus answered for himself and said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? And Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast when he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine would burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskin would be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. And then on the Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields as his disciples walked along. They began to pick some heads of grain and eat. And the Pharisees said to him, look what they are doing. This is unlawful on the Sabbath. And Jesus answered, 
Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, David entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. And then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And so the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Friends, all of this is the gospel of our Lord, for which we say, thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please pray with me. ever-present God, center us, hold us, empty us, and awaken us that we may be present to you. And may these words offered here and the collective meditations of our hearts and minds be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So my movement today was to also help illustrate that we now continue to step a little further away from that Advent Christmas season and all of its wonderful stories and step further into the season of Epiphany, which is a word that means both a revelation and an understanding, a gaining of knowledge. And so we do so today Hearing from the Gospel of Mark, this is the shortest of the four Gospels, and it's characterized by a real sense of urgency. The writers of Mark's Gospel repeatedly use words and phrases like, at once, or just then, or immediately, immediately Jesus walked, or immediately he stepped out of the boat. And the overall effect is a telling of this story in a succinct and rapid way that reveals to us, the gospel writer's particular perspective on what was important about Jesus, the man, the savior, and the Messiah, who we are all called to follow. And notably, one huge difference is Mark's gospel does not begin by dwelling in that story of how Christ came to dwell with us. There's no elaborate, sentimental babe in the manger scene, no choir of angels or kick line of shepherds, no heightened tension about King Herod's threat and the Magi's visit. Instead, Mark's gospel begins its beginning written to emphasize the factors that Mark finds crucial in revealing the identity of Jesus the Christ. And the first significant factor is Jesus' identity as one who fulfills Isaiah's prophecy. And so for Mark, the beginning is the story of Jesus reuniting with his cousin John, the one who the other Gospels tell us left in his mother's womb when he became aware of Jesus in his mother's womb. And now the two become fulfillers of Isaiah's prophecy about the one who would come and the one who would prepare the way. Jesus and John the baptizer... John, who had already turned on its head the traditional custom of ritual washing and scapegoating as a way of getting rid of sin, John created a, a spiritual experience, which is something we now call a sacrament, a visible sign of invisible grace bestowed upon us all through water in a ritual that now calls us to turn around our inward lives, to turn against the worldly voices of insufficiency, negativity, and death, 
and turn toward inwardly and outwardly to orient ourselves to the voice of abundance and life. So it's fitting that Jesus turns things around even more by telling John that John has to be the one to baptize Jesus and not the other way around as John would have it. And this factor reveals a significant and unworldly characteristic of Christ as Messiah. Humility. A humbleness to bow and to first receive the grace which he has come to bestow. And then the gospel writers make a rare break from this sparse, immediate writing style to dwell in that moment, to savor the details of the heavens parting and God's booming voice pronouncing, this is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Then that next chunk of Mark's gospel, those several brief excerpts that I read, reveal more examples of the type of table-turning, status quo-shifting Messiah that Christ revealed himself to be. Jesus was not one to be bound by the letter of the static law, but by the ever-breathing fire of the Holy Spirit. That is, <clears throat> Jesus did not obey the law as a matter of rote to avoid conflict or criticism, nor did he seek to break the law as a means of defiance. He simply came to show and teach that God's commands have always existed for an overarching purpose of bringing atonement, a word which we can also understand as at one mint, bringing reconciliation, unity, connectedness, and wholeness to all of humankind through commanding us to learn to love, to show compassion for the poor and needy, empathy for the bereft and downtrodden, respect for the disenfranchised, and inclusion for the exiled. Holy laws, like observing the Sabbath, were made for the sake and well-being of humankind. And though at one time rituals like fasting from work and food served to give the people a spiritual identity, a cultural identity, Christ came as Lord of the Sabbath and kin of all humankind to create a new identity, a new life in a resurrected body of witnesses, reconciling grace great enough to include all the people of Israel as well as the Gentiles, Romans, Greeks, peoples of all nations and walks of life the whole human race, making us one while loving us and upholding us for what is unique and special about each one of us. And this, this Christ, this Jesus, as revealed here, as revealed throughout each gospel, and most importantly, as revealed to us in our lived experiences and our lives, is the leader whom we are all called to follow. And that he is the leader whom those who step forward to be set apart as deacons and elders will look to for knowledge about who we are and how we are to be the body of Christ in this time and place. And all of this involves the discipline of discernment. Such a wonderful word, not one that we commonly use in our other areas of life. We're more used to decision-making, using our own logic and reason and experience to 
um, to value choices and rate them. No, discernment is a little different. It involves listening with holy, open ears for the voice of God, whether it comes to us in words and sighs, or the way we look and see someone in a new light, or the way we might recognize in someone a gift that serves a particular need. Discernment is the discipline for those who follow a leader who does not stand still, who is constantly on the move, seeking out the lost, healing the sick, opening the eyes of the blind, breaking bread with the outcasts, and washing the feet of his friends and family. Christ is the leader whom we are all called to follow, and Christ is the leader who gives us a common identity both in the unique lives that we live and the common rebirth we share in baptism and being claimed by those same waters that Jesus bowed his head to receive in order to share with us through holy kinship the blessing of being called children of God. Which is all to say that no matter how great or how trivial the issue or problem may seem, there is no question too difficult for us to consider, no task too great for us to approach, no need that is beyond our collective reach when we acknowledge that we are all held in the love of God through Christ Jesus. And so we follow. Where will he lead us? Whose homes and lives will we be called to share? Whose shoes will we be called to walk in? And through whose eyes will we learn to see ourselves so that we, too, can be committed to that daily practice of changing inwardly and outwardly, turning and renewing our lives turning towards the Spirit, turning outward to see and know and love and welcome more and more siblings in faith, turning with an intention to heal wounds created long ago, to reclaim the language and symbols aligned with our faith, by living our lives in a way that shows the whole world who we are and who we follow. <clears throat> They'll know we are Christians by our love. It's my favorite hymn and one that I always go back to when I ask that question, what would Jesus do? And I humbly remind myself that I am not Jesus. No one of us is. But together, collectively, in sharing our lives and our gifts, our fears and our failings, we are the living, breathing body of Christ in the world today. Thanks be to God. And now it's time for us to turn to that blue piece of paper that I handed to you. And uh, first, let me say that we are called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism, each one of us. It's what marks us as Christ's own. And it is a common calling to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our Lord. But also within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, or as ministers of word and sac sacrament. Ordination, which we will do today, 
is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world, for the ordering, of, ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and celebration of the sacraments. So at this time, I would like to invite forward those who are being ordained and or installed today, including those who were elected by this congregation last week and who, um, for the most part, spent yesterday morning further discerning the nature of the call to servant leadership. And so I now present, and would you please come forward, Beth Wally, who today will be ordained to the Office of Elder and installed to the Session Class of 2024, as well as Ian Gilbert, who will be ordained to the Office of Elder, installed to Session Class of 2024. Elders Mary Baim and Tim Harvey, who join uh, returning Elder Linda Wilton, all being installed to Session Class of 2026. For our Board of Deacons, we are pleased to welcome and install the previously ordained Sue Harvey to the class of 2024, as well as to reinstall Mike Schmidt, Alex McCormick, and Kim Welter to the Board of Deacons for another three-year term, the class of 2026. And uh, Katie, you're going to help me again with a question in there. It's like a whole kick line here. So I'm going to stand over here by the font and let you guys all um, see me as we profess together our faith. As God calls some to particular forms of ministry, God calls us all to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. So I ask you to reaffirm your baptismal vows, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. So I ask all of you now, trusting in the gracious, gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. And now let us together join in affirming our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The constitutional questions that I will now ask all those being ordained and installed come from our church constitution, the PCUSA Book of Order, which all Hamilton fans probably now know. Um, the Presbyterians were the ones who designed the system that our, our country's constitution and government is based on, which is to say that just like when we say our affirmation of faith, these are the questions that we ponder, that those in servant leadership lean into, think about, and return to for guidance on how to live out their roles as deacons and elders. So some of these are very straightforward. Others, as we learned yesterday, um, caused us to pause and dwell and think about their meaning. And I now ask you to answer before all present here, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, 
acknowledge him Lord of all, head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture believes us to believe and do, and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? And will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? I will. will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a good friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? And will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I do. And will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination and love I will. those being installed as elders Beth Ian Tim and Mary will you be faithful ruling elders watching over the people providing for their worship nurture and service and will you share in government and discipline serving in councils of the church and your ministry will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ and will you, those being installed as deacons, Sue, Kim, Alex, and Mike, will you be faithful deacons, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Amen. Now Katie gets to ask you all some questions. Do we, the members of the church, accept Beth, Ian, Linda, Mary, and Tim as elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. Do we accept with gratitude the commitments of Sue, Mike, Kim, and Alex to serve as deacons in the ministry of care and compassion for our congregation and community? If so, say, we do. Do we agree to pray for all those being installed today and the rest of our elders and deacons to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, say we do. So our installation prayer is one of those times where I think we um, beautifully make visible what it looks like to be the body of Christ and that is by a laying on of hands. So since Beth and Ian are the two being ordained here the first time, what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is maybe just trade places with Mary and Tim here and put you in the middle, um, and all the rest of you previously ordained folks, join me, let's try to form a, a human connection here by placing a hand on their shoulder and or on the shoulder of someone who is touching them. It is appropriate at this time, too, for me to invite anyone else present who has been ordained to the ministry of deacon and elder to come forward and place a hand on this body, if you so wish, or if it's more appropriate for you to stand and put your hand towards us, you can, you can connect from your seat, whichever works for you, um, to visualize, symbolize, feel the connectedness of all servant leaders in this ongoing ministry of following our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ.
Let us pray. Faithful God, in baptism you claimed us, and by your Holy Spirit you are working in our lives, empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading these members of our congregation, your children, through Christ to this time and place. Establish them in your truth, Guide them by your Holy Spirit, that in your service they may grow in faith, hope, and love, and be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. God, in Jesus Christ you call disciples, and by the Holy Spirit you connect them, make them one church to serve you. Let it be your spirit ruling your church in all that we do so that we may be forever joined in love and service to Jesus Christ, who having gone before us is coming to meet us in the promise of your kingdom. And so it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I declare you all now ordained and installed to your various offices Welcome to this ministry. And applause, hugs, handshakes are all appropriate responses. One way that we all live into our baptism, through our commitment to share our time, talents, and material resources for the ministries of the church, God's chosen vehicle for action in the world. Let us give freely in faith that whatever we give will be blessed by God to be a blessing onto others. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, say that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light riches I heed not nor vain empty praise thou mine inheritance now and always thou and thou only first in my heart High King of Heaven, my treasure thou art. High King of Heaven, my victory won. May I reach Heaven's joys, O bright Heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, Whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all.
Let us pray. Heavenly Parent, we offer you these gifts. Please bless them just as you bless those who gave them and those who will receive them. May the sharing of this money remind us of the connection that holds us all together in the beloved community you call us to form. Amen. Today we are going to pray with music again, but before we do, you can be seated as you flip to 469. You probably won't read, need the music once we get in there. But first I want to gather again any prayers that those here have to share. Um, Kim Rennick has shared a joy that her brother Rob's six-month scan post non-Hodgkin's lymphoma was clear. Um, I want to remember to ask for prayers for uh, Mikey Bowles and Melissa and their family. I hope I'm getting this right. Mikey's brother passed this past week, and they were actually at his funeral on Thursday, so we lift them in prayer. Are the others gathered here who have things to share, lift, thanksgivings or needs? Wave at me, please. Uh, my sister Caroline is going to have surgery on Wednesday as she continues to battle her cancer. The chemo's over, and this next stage is the surgery. So prayers for her. Thank you. Other prayers to share? Making sure I don't miss anybody. I'll come back here. Thank you, John. Prayer of Thanksgiving. Um, we got to celebrate our 30th anniversary with COVID. <laughs> oh, well, happy anniversary, John and Marianne, and we're happy to have you here and recovering and on the mend. So other prayer concerns, Thanksgivings, anniversaries? One, yeah, shout it out. Prayers of Thanksgiving. One year ago today, me and Katie were both married in this church, and we are deeply grateful for the support we've gotten through a challenging year, but a good year. And we are, we are grateful for you as well. Yay. Anything else before we uh, learn to pray with song and with thought and with heart? Let us now come to God in prayer with our hymn of prayer, 469. We'll hang it, sing it twice and then I'll cue you to bring it back up as we go through our prayers. So this is Lord, listen to your children praying. of new beginnings as we step further into this fresh new year we long to erase and leave behind the brokenness from the year behind us and we forget that our time is not your time 
So we are grateful that you are just as present with us today as you were last week, and that you will be present with us in the coming weeks in all that is to come, good and bad and new and confusing and exciting and revealing. God, help us hear your voice and know that you are with us in it all, that you hear our cries. Lord, listen to your children praying. for all that breaks our hearts. News of wars, entire cultures and populations of people being wiped away, atrocities that humanity inflicts on one another that are beyond what we can bear to imagine, senseless gun violence, climate change, the disparities and inequalities of wealth and access, the erosion of our democracy, the cultural, social, political, and familial divides, economic despair, loneliness, hopelessness, hunger, and thirst. For all these things that deplete us and deplete others, give us the courage to face them, name them, see them, and respond in ways that proclaim your truth in the face of it all. God, remind us who we are and whose we are. Tear open the heavens, we pray, and may the sound of your voice turn us around, even as you hear us calling, Lord. Listen to your children praying. to you not be just a litany of brokenness and despair, but a testimony to our faith in your power to give us the courage to face the burdens we all share, to trust in your promise of healing for those facing scary diagnoses and surgeries and treatments, to trust in your promise of life abundant in the face of uncertain future, to comfort one another as you comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones, and to above all give thanks to you in all times and places for the confidence you bring for all the concerns and needs shared here, as well as those known to you, but not yet to us. Send your Holy Spirit of comfort and peace. God, show us, teach us, 
and move us to be the arms of compassion wrapped around all in need and trust that you hear us when we say, Lord, listen to your children. ears to your truth again and again. Unite us in the waters of baptism and give us new hope for the new beginnings you now bring. We trust that the prayers voiced here as well as the ones that remain in our hearts be lifted to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in every way. folks have about um, whatever experience you have in life, good, bad, or indifferent, use it. Use it to motivate you for your glory, for whatever it is that you're going to do. Trust and know that you have something to give for the glory of God. Something that Tim is going to remind us about right now. <laughs> As I look at him and remember, he wanted to share a brief announcement about... Yes, next Sunday is our next opportunity to feed the homeless at the YWCA Homeless Shelter, uh, which is a family shelter, and in this cold time, I'm sure that there will be plenty of folks there that need the food that we will provide. Uh, Sign-up sheets are in the lounge, and there are still a few slots open for various items, so please sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever it is that you bring to the table, trust and know there is a way for God to use it. 
So remember who you are, who you follow, and that how to follow is revealed through that relationship we all share with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So may his endless grace, the great love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit that makes us one be with us now and always. Amen.